Hello and welcome to Bharat Shakti Dot N. I am Brigadier Chatterjee. We are going to be talking about 5G technology today. In fact, this is a part of our series, technology series that we've been running for some time now, and we've already spoken about artificial intelligence over two episodes. Today, it will be entirely devoted to 5G technologies. To take you through the paces in this technological area, I have with me Commander. Milind Kuntreshta, uh, welcome, Commander Milind Kuntreshta. Good evening, sir. Uh, Commander Milind, uh, let's talk about five G technology today. As I understand, you are under your own company's uh, AI Kairos, and you are working in highly technical areas, by and large, what is called today as Industry Four Point Zero. Uh, well, if you're comfortable, my first question to you is. There are many technologies which have evolved, you know, in the last two de decades. It's a technological area. The research has rapidly taken place. One of the disrupted technologies is 5G in communications field. Can you explain to our audience this 5G technology so that everybody gets on the same page? So 5G is the fifth generation mobile network. Everybody has been aware about 4G going backward, 3G, 2G, 1G. That is how the communication and the mobile handset we have got in our hand has come. But 5G is a revolutionary technology. Uh, it is a mobile technology which is specifically designed for machine to machine and system uh, talking, whereas humans also can use it for interface and talk. So when we design a 5G network, it is from end to end. We are looking at speeds from, uh, you know, few Mbps to 20 Gbps. So that's a huge amount of information which it can handle. Uh, taking the example, like everybody is talking that it's come, going to come in future. Uh, by the way, 5G has been rolled out in India also. Uh, Prime Minister Sir had inaugurated the 5G conclave uh, on 1st of October 2022 at Pragati Maidan. It was a very vibrant uh, conclave of India Mobile Congress. Uh, just two days back, uh, 5G uh, has been, uh, you know, uh, uh, institutionalized by Jew uh, also uh, in about 184 cities um, and then uh, which covers 4.6 percent of population in India. Um, Airtel is also there uh, with 5G in 52 cities. Uh, Gujarat leads the way for 5G coverage in 34 cities followed by Karnataka uh, which has got 19 cities already enabled for 5G. Uh, Andhra Pradesh also has got 16 cities. So what I mean to say here is that it's already come into India and the technology is proven and is going to go ahead. So from Defense Forces, uh, let's have a perspective that it is around the corner and already available with us. In terms of population coverage, Delhi and Chandigarh is 100% covered wherever the 5G network is available. Now, when we talk about 5G network, we are also looking at uh, what are the bands we are talking about. Like in 2G, 3G, 4G, there were bands. But in 5G, it covers aspects from low band, which is less than 2 gigahertz, to mid band, 2 to 6 gigahertz, to going up to greater than 6 gigahertz in, you know, millimeter wave. So when we talk about the low band, it gives definitely a wider coverage, which we have been seen in uh, low, uh, lower frequency bands. Uh, mid band, it provides us with the 4G kind of a uh, you know capability where we can interface 4G, 5G, and they can work together. However, the tower system or the way we transmit uh, public uh, 5G, there are two aspects: public and private 5G. So uh, we had to present talk about the public 5G that is which is going to come through the towers. Uh, the high band, which is uh, what is the millimeter wave, uh, which was never there in the communication system. So that's something new which has uh, come over. Uh, there we are going to have, uh, you know, high uh, capacity to transfer information and data. And that is what is the interest for military. So 5G possesses three main characteristics, if I can uh, bring them out. First is a massive amount of information which can be handled. Uh, there are likely to be more than 18 billion mobile device users by 2025 in the world. So you, we can imagine how much of information is going to be created. Uh, there's a stringent quality of service. When I download something, I want to see it to the best quality possible. Normal 4G is not able to give, as we see in, as we used to see in 3G. Uh, thirdly, the heterogeneous environment, wherein, you know, whatever is the kind of end user, whether it is, what is the network, all that can be combined together. So that's the strength of the 5G. Millimeter wave is a new dimension which has come in communication, and it's of a high interest for 
uh, uh, defense forces. And uh, MIMO is a multiple input, multiple output, is a massive, uh, you know, information data sharing network, which is the feature of fight. Uh, right. Let's go a little further. Uh, you know, there are certain terminologies which come into use and you keep hearing about them time and again when we talk about 5G. And I would request you to dwell on one or two of them. The ones that I have in mind is uh, you're describing as to uh, what is 5G ultra reliable low latency communications really. Uh, and then you have things like machine to machine communication and enhanced mobile broadband. A bit of it perhaps you've already touched upon. Can you explain to us a little more in detail on these issues? So whenever uh, technologies uh, shift from research to public use, there are a lot of jargons and, you know, necessary uh, terms which come along with the uh, technology, especially the new technology. So um, just to give the uh, depth, EMBB, URLLC, MMTC are the terms which are there, but uh, simplifying them, a full 5G system comprises of mainly three features or technology. Enhanced mobile broadband, the ultra reliable low latency communication. This is very important for defense forces, especially when we are talking about hard real time systems. Then massive machine type uh, communication, that is machine to machine, we achieve communication. Uh, slightly giving more details on uh, the simplified form of this. Uh, enhanced mobile broadband is a technology which is beyond the 4G and the LTE. LTE is a private 4G we used to have earlier. Uh, these services uh, give lower latency, lower data delays. Uh, finally, those things which we expect to improve upon, uh, what are available today, and that is what 5G is bringing in. So it uses this EMBB or enhanced mobile broadband as a technology. We get speeds up to you know 100 Mbps, which is like 100 uh, or you know 10,000 times more uh, traffic can be handled. And mobility, high mobility up to let's say a vehicle which is moving uh, 200. To 500 kilometers per hour this can maintain the connectivity so the beauty here is that multiple technologies have been you know grouped together under the umbrella of 5g uh, the use of emmb is like uh, let's say we are looking at augmented reality vir virtual reality kind of a scenario so we require a video stream which is uninterrupted of a, a special uh, you know quality of service a telemedicine's Coming to the second technology, which is a massive machine type communication, uh, properly called MMTC. Uh, it's like we have to support billions of sensors and devices at one go. Uh, let's say we're managing a warehouse or a vehicle fleet, or let's say merchant vessels which are there in a particular port. So MMTC is one which, have, which is likely to come as handy. Uh, it supports long ranges and a pretty good uh, data speed up to 100 kbps which is good enough for non real time kind of information um wherever there is a high connection density let's say in a stadium so we are expecting mmtc to come to our rescue uh the third one is the ultra reliable low latency communication so low latency is what is very important uh, whenever we talk about sending information from one place to the second place uh this is of special interest to military, especially for, uh, in tactical data link, which we develop. Uh, the latency and throughput becomes a very, very important factor and reliability of information. So with the, this ultra reliable low latency communication, we are expected to achieve 99.99% reliability of information. Let's say I have given a fire command here, 10 kilometers away, the missile would launch without any uh, risk of information being lost. Uh, so it also is important for critical IoT information of things. Uh, it gives up to one millisecond when we talk about uh, driverless car and various other applications. This becomes a very important feature over here. Uh, all right. Uh, one more question for this session, and then we can possibly get on to the next session some other time, and we'll continue discussing 5G. Then the word edge is gaining popularity. What is this word E D G E as technology, in technological terms, I would say rather, in relationship with 5G? So uh, the edge has got a physical meaning. Uh, it is a technology which is closer to the uh, sensor uh, in terms of military parlance, uh, the sensor to shooter loop. Uh, this technology, uh, to explain, is a technology which has come to solve the cloud computation delays. Uh, it's an emerging technology of very high use for defense forces. Uh, wherein the end user or UE, the user equipment is what is going to get the 
computation capability and the storage capability. Uh, with, the, with the traditional cloud where the information has been laid back to far off place and reprocessed and sent back. So when we talk about key performance indicator of 5G, it is one of the criteria, especially as far as low latency and bandwidth efficiencies are concerned. These are two, three important uh, factors whenever we are designing any communication network or a communication system. Uh, it is planned to, you know, handle or rather it's designed to handle application services with hard real-time uh, requirements uh, using edge servers. So if we look at the architecture where there is an end uh, user or the user equipment and the cloud, very close to physically also very close to the end user or let's say there's a drone which has got a camera. So the camera is processing on board drone itself the results of video analytics, which doesn't happen because of various other reasons. So edge computing is a preferred to cater to wireless communication requirement of next generation. And when we talk about next generation, as I have already discussed, this is already there, 5G. What are the significance we achieve out of this? We can have a collaborative platform, which is what is required in modern uh, network-centric warfare. Uh, against the traditional computing model where it was centralized computing in the edge, the computation at a very, at a very low level is available on the very close to the equipment. Like we are designing one of the systems where we are implementing the edge technology. So that technology is more about on the uh, the weapon side itself, we have some competition or rather on the sensor side also, we have a competition and they process it before it goes to the command and control and he has to take the decision quicker. So the delays which are like, let's say uh, a driverless car is expecting a 10 millisecond kind of a response and the cloud processing is going to take 50 millisecond, the purpose is lost. So this is where the edge computation is going to play an important role. Uh, the first uh, one as a key requirement I can say is the real-time interaction. Uh, local processing is feasible. And thirdly, the high data rate which are required for artificial intelligence and various other new uh, technologies which are coming in uh, machine learning and deep learning, they are going to be possible through millimeter wave frequency banks and various other 5G technology. And the fourth is high availability ensures that you have always the information for the correct decision making. Uh, the other is a local awareness. You know where the edge is there. So in a GPS, uh, you know, disabled environment also, you can keep doing your computation. And network context awareness is very important. Like which is the best part to send the information which happens when we design any command and control system, which is like a battlefield surveillance system and action system. So edge is the future of defense as I appreciate. Uh, right. Uh, thank you so much, Commander. I think uh, that was an excellent explanation of 5G. It does uh, put us on that springboard to take off a little more deeper into the subject and we'll definitely do so in the next session that we have with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, right. And thank you, viewers. Thanks for tuning in to BharatShakti.in. Do tune in now and then and you will find such interesting um, topics being discussed. And should you have any topics that you want us to take on, please let us know. Do go to your, our social media sites and like us. Thank you.